Hello everybody, this video is going to be about uh, developing the SD struct in the uh, .nears file. Uh, from what I noticed in all the conversion scripts that are currently on Homer, uh, the Hitachi conversion script, Hitachi to Homer here, does include most of the uh, SD struct that is needed, and I'll go through that. Uh, for the Nearx uh, to Nears as well as the sh uh, Shimadzu to Nears, both are lacking the SD, or S SD file. Or SD variable. Uh, what this will mean is that you more than likely will have to either um, add it after the fact or implement it into the conversion script uh, before actually converting the the um, data over. So the SD in SD struct just stands for source detector and the fact that it's a struct is just a MATLAB uh, variable type. So what that means, and I just wrote kind of an example script here uh, to implement this, is that you're going to have to do something along these lines. Uh, in this case, I have a .nears file called bs.nears. I won't go into details on why I named it that. But I just loaded it in, and you'll see that I do have an SD struct here. I'm going to go ahead and clear my SD. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is step-by-step step kind of show you how you can uh, create it on your own in MATLAB and then actually append it to your file. Uh, all this said, you could actually include this in your conversion script itself so that you wouldn't have to do this. Um, but if you've already converted the data and you need it in there, this will help you do that. So first I'm just going to create an empty variable uh, called SD. There we go. Now I'm going to create some units in it. Uh, so first off you have SD spatial unit, uh, SD dot spatial unit. Uh, this I have set to millimeters. It's either going to be centimeters or millimeters. Um, but if you do plan on using Atlas Viewer at any point, Atlas Viewer does expect uh, millimeters, so do make sure that first off um, that you have this implemented in millimeters, but also that that would be correct. So in your data itself, if it was originally in centimeters or originally in inches or something like that, you'd have to obviously convert it um, into the correct unit. So I'm going to go ahead and create that, and now, now you'll notice when I open this up that I have a spatial unit. Go ahead and maneuver this so it's a little easier to see. There we go. So now we can see as we build it. So the next down is going to be the sd.lambda, which is going to be your uh, wavelengths. So depending on what system you have, these wavelengths will probably be different. Uh, I'm working with the Nearx Near Scout, which has 760 to 850 nanometers, but uh, many other systems will have different uh, wavelengths. So make sure that you have that correct. Um, in the Nearx system, you would be able to uh, find that in the header file, the .hdr. Uh, I'm sure the other systems as well have either it in the manuals or in a similar file. Uh, next, you would need the source positions. These are just X, Y, Z coordinates. Uh, I've just created some uh, pretty nonsense coordinates here. And here we go. Now I have my source positions in there. And uh, also keep in mind you're going to want it's uh, going to be X, Y, Z per every source and per every detector. Or in this case, sources for source, source position and detector for detector position. So here I'll go ahead and run these as well. And here we go, we're starting to build it here. Number of sources and number of detectors, obviously that would just be the number that you're using. Uh, that will more than likely vary depending on what machine you have as well. Oop, and I did this actually incorrectly. So you want S SD dot and SD dot. So that makes sure that it's within the source structure. So go ahead and do that, there we go. And then we finally have our mesh list. The mesh list is a little screwy in appearance, but all it is is the um, collection of sources and detectors that you consider a channel, and that's going to be per wavelength. So here we have source 2, detector 4. The third column is actually all just ones, and the fourth column is your wavelength. So it's source 2, detector 4, wavelength 1, source 2, detector 5, wavelength 1, etc., etc. Then we get to source 2, detector 4, wavelength 2, and it's just a repeat of that. Um, you could do this where you basically designate as mesh list 1 for wavelength 1, mesh, link, mesh list 2 for wavelength 2, and then concatenate the two variables so that you have a total mesh list. Uh, I've just gone ahead and included in both. It may be kind of better computationally. Oop, I got also again got to do SD dot. Um, it may be better computationally if you create two separate variables and then together put them in. But here we have all these set up. And finally, I want to then, I'm pretending as though I have already converted the file into a .nears format, but I forgot the SD list. 
the SD struct. And so now I actually want to append all these variables to the original um, file. So actually what I'll do is replace file name with my bs.nears and I can go ahead and run that. I'm not going to go, I'm not really going to bother because it'll actually resave as as it, it was previous, but that would be the uh, uh, final saving uh, line of code that you would need is basically save, file name, it's a mat file, and then you would just want to append it to the original. You're not replacing it. Anyway, uh, this is basically the uh, gist of the uh, SD file, how to create one. Uh, to review, uh, uh, the Hitachi to Homer does have everything except, except spatial units, so you'll see sd.mejlist. Um, it has uh, a few others in here as well. You can see there's the me the total mesh list, which is quite a bit of code. Uh, then you also have number of sources, number of detectors, the source and detector position, etc. Shimatsu is lacking that, and so is the near X file as well. Um, so I hope this helps. Uh, again, this was another case that I saw several times in the forum. I figured a, a video may may be of use for this. Um, the code itself, not too complex, just a variable with several properties within it. Um, most of these properties you can find uh, in the experimental data, either in a an output file or hopefully recorded as well. Uh, the most difficult would obviously be the uh, source and detector com uh, XYZ components as they would be a spatial three-dimensional mapping and obviously that's a little bit more difficult um, depending on the montage that may be saved as in kind of an average or something like that anyway I do hope this was of a help and uh, I'll hopefully have a few more videos here in the future thank you